You are working on AI technologies and want to learn a model on agricultural image data or would simply like to work with cauliflower plants. Me, Jana Kirov, and my colleagues provide a cauliflower image time series data set called Growlyflower, which can be used in agricultural sciences for growth and harvest prediction on real field conditions. Cauliflower is a demanding crop cultivation with a high quality requirement. The maximization of harvest depends on the estimation of a short, highly weather dependent harvest window. And due to difficult identification of harvest time, we also provide image pairs of defoliated and non defoliated plants to explore growth. In addition to our time series data, we provide annotated masks representing plant instance segmentations, leaf instance segmentations, and stem annotations. In detail, our dataset looks like this. Our fields are located in Bornheim, in the west of Germany. We acquired data for two fields, one in 2020 and one in 2021, with slightly different sizes and different cultivars. The data acquisition took place during the whole growing period. We collected three different sources of data. The first is image-based UAV data, which is dense and given a high resolution. Additionally, we georeference our image data to locate the images globally in space. The third source are manually collected data in the field. These are direct measurements of, for example, phenotypic traits and the development state. It's sparse because it's labor-intensive, but it's very precise. The measurements were taken once a week and georeferencing was done three times during the growing period. Two important things are that for field one, we had some data processing issues, so some autophotos are not available. And due to the weather conditions, the intervals between neighbor flights are not equally distributed, um, which is important for later analysis. In the following slide, we focus on examples for field 2, because the procedure is similar for both fields. For data acquisition, we use a DJI Matrix 600 hexacopter with two cameras installed, a RGB and a multispectral one, and depending on the Flying altitude, we reach ground resolutions of 1.5 mm per pixel and 3.1 mm per pixel. With this video, you can get an overview of the plant development and how lightning conditions vary over time. On some parts in the fields, there is a lot of weak growth where you have to deal with in your analysis. You can see some plots in this video um, with defoliated plants. Um, like here, and I will talk about this a bit later on. For thousands of plants, we provide georeference coordinates in addition to the autophotos. So patches like these can be extracted out of the autophotos. Like you see, plants develop different, and the bottom row illustrates the plant, which develops slower than the plant in the top row. Especially, you can see this on August 11th. We separate our image data into three datasets, our, our reference plants, defoliated plants and random distributed plants, which do not belong to the other two datasets. Besides, images, uh, besides image time series, we provide manual collected data as number of leaves, plant and head size, etc. for defined plots in the field. Those plots can be seen in the lower left order photo, and we call those plants, um, or we call the plants in those plots reference plants. We provide the specific harvest point for each plant and information about day after planting for every point in time. In our work, we also show uh, some analysis, like for example, amount of harvest for each plot per time point. One goal is to get insights into the relation between external appearance of plants and its head. For that we defoliated the heads for hundreds of plants for different points in time. We uh, did a pre and post flight to get image pairs of defoliated plants and those pairs are provided in addition to the time series of the plants. You can see some examples here on this slide um, how those plants look like. In addition to the time series datasets, we provide image annotation including plant instance segmentations, leaf instance segmentations, 
void instant segmentation and stem annotations. This dataset can be used for machine learning tasks like detection, semantic segmentation, instant segmentation or stem detection. We annotated four different growing stages. We have only shown three here, but there is another one in a later growing stage where the plants do overlap as well. Now in the end, a short summary about our dataset. We provide a new time series dataset for growth analysis of cauliflower, which we call Growlyflower. With this dataset, we want to combine the world of machine learning with agricultural sciences, and to do that, we additionally provide instant segmentation and stem annotation data to address the topic of growth and harvest prediction of cauliflower. And to get more insights to the growth, we also provide pre- and post-defolated images of plants. If you have any questions to our data, um, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. I'm very happy about explaining you a bit more um, about our work and our data. Um, thank you very much for watching.